Mike Patron is a risk management consultant in the business protection risk management for CUNA Mutual Group. In Mike's role, he assists credit unions in identifying areas of risk in their operations and recommends appropriate controls to reduce loss exposure. Mike began his career with CUNY Mutual Group in 1986 as a loss prevention specialist. He was later promoted to risk management specialist and then to senior risk uh, management specialist. Prior to joining CUNY Mutual Group, Mike worked as a fraud auditor for the state of Massachusetts. Mike has earned a bachelor's degree in accountant from Salem State University and has also earned the designations of certified fraud examiner, certified financial service auditor, and credit union security and fraud expert. In addition, Mike is a licensed real estate broker in Maine and Massachusetts. Well, thank you, Mike. We appreciate you being here today. And this should be a very interesting conversation today because as we know, everything has changed uh, due to COVID. Uh, thank you, Christine. Um, hopefully uh, you're able to see my, my screen on the, uh, everybody can see the screen now, Christine. No, nope, we can't see it just yet. Are you hitting share screen? Um, I did hit share screen. And then you have to go and select the document that you want. Right. And then you'll want to lift up your um, your camera up a little. There you go. Yeah, I was just looking to trying to get on here to, to see it on my screen to try to. Yeah, I hit share screen and I'm trying to pull up mine when I click on my PowerPoint. It's. Um, I have my my PowerPoint up, but you're not seeing it. No. Nope. And you're like selecting it and then yeah, let me just see his share. Joe, do you have any suggestions? You have to have your PowerPoint uh, file open in PowerPoint before you click on share screen, Mike. And then when you do click on that green share screen button, it should bring up um, a window of all of the different programs, windows, or screens that you have available that you can click on. And one of them will be that PowerPoint presentation. There you go. Yep. It's okay, coming. great. There, got it. So if uh, you just click on slideshow in the top menu yep. and then um, start from beginning. Okay. Okay. Is that all set now? Well, it's, it's black with a gray bar. There you go. You got okay. it. Now thank I'm all you. set. Okay, I thank you. I apologize, um, you know, for that technical, you know, t uh, difficulty with that. Yeah, Christine and Joe, thank you very much for having me today. Um, as, as you had mentioned, I've been with CUNY Mutual Group for, I'm in my 35th year, so I've been around a long time, and I've seen a lot of different changes, you know, throughout the credit union movement. Um, and I, it, it's all been in the risk management department. And uh, first of all, I want to welcome everybody, you know, back from lunch, and I hope that you and your families are all uh, doing well under these uh, very difficult, you know, times. And uh, they are definitely, you know, <laughs> strange times. In my 35 years, I've never seen anything, you know, like this. So today, what we're going to be talking about is going to be uh, reopening the branch, safety and security, and workplace of tomorrow. Um, I'd like to try to make this, uh, you know, interactive uh, as much as we can with any questions. We will have uh, time at the end if you want to save the questions, you know, till uh, till the end. Um, but this is a lot of good information, and I'm sure that most of you uh, are at different places as far as uh, if your lobbies are open or you're still uh, doing by appointment only or drive up but um, I'm gonna be trying to touch base on all the different things that we've been seeing out there um, and hopefully it will be beneficial you know, to you. 
I also want to make you aware that um, I am available uh, to, to, it's all value added in the CUNY Mutual Bond, uh, to do reviews uh, in these, in, in several areas uh, the credit union has, you know, from internal controls to physical security to, you know, cyber security, uh, you know, to uh, plastic cards, employment practices. Uh, it's all value added um, and also doing presentations for your credit union specifically. Um, I'm available for uh, for that for that as well. Um, I do a lot of I do a lot of um, I do a lot of robbery presentations and also I'm a certified active shooter trainer as well. So I do a lot of active shooter training. So if that's something in the future that your credit union would like, we could set up a a, a, a WebEx and I do a lot of virtual training. And again, this is all value added. So, you know, definitely take advantage um, of, of the services that would be uh, available, you know, to you. Um, and, you know, with Active Shooter, it's kind of, you know, taking, uh, taking you know, back seat to everything that's going on. I guess the one good thing about what COVID had brought is uh, there's less people gathering and we haven't had Active Shooter you know, incidents like we've had in the past. They were growing at a pretty alarming rate. But it is something too that you don't want to totally forget about and look, you know, look to develop a program, policies, procedures, guidelines, and also training in that area as well. Because I have a feeling that once uh, everything opens up again, we're going to have a, uh, you know, uh, you know, we're going to have more incidents in active shooter. Uh, so you want to be prepared for that. But I'll certainly make myself available to your your credit unions. Certainly a much different, you know, threat profile now than what we have seen in, you know, in the past. You know, COVID-19 has led to a, you know, quick adoption of plans, you know, for sure. I know a lot of credit unions, what they were looking for, uh, looking at, you know, we, we did a lot of work with branch of the future. You know, how, we, how is your branch today going to be different, you know, uh, of tomorrow? And with COVID, it just brought a lot of changes uh, happening a, a lot quicker. Um, so a lot of credit unions that uh, when they're implementing changes, you know, with COVID, they're looking long term saying, you know, these changes are not only for today, but we want to bring them going forward uh, in, into the future as well. So we've uh, I've consulted with a lot of credit unions uh, that are having, you know, different law office uh, setups, um, you know, for sure. And one of the biggest things is having, you know, a lot of credit unions are having the day to day. Uh, member transactions uh, being handled, you know, by, you know, you know, technology, uh, you know, for sure. So we're seeing a lot more of uh, the ATMs with interactive telemachines, you know, drive up. Uh, so we're seeing a lot of these, even walk-ups now, when credit unions are looking to, uh, you know, to, to build in their construction plans. But we definitely see, you know, this for today, but also going forward, they think it's going to be a great idea, you know, for that. Uh, remote work arrangements and flexibility. Uh, again, I routinely review you know, policies uh, for telecommuting and a lot of credit unions, what I, first thing I would ask is, you know, are you doing this, uh, is this policy for, for today uh, with COVID or is something going, uh, going into the future? Um, because that's going to be a, a, a big thing because when I look at a policy, I'm gonna wanna know if it's just for COVID or you, it's going to be part of your agreement, your working arrangements going going forward, and certainly branch reconfiguration is going to be another huge thing that we're seeing. You know, credit unions now, which we're going to be getting into, you know, have social distancing, uh, different office layouts, um, and what they're doing is now seeing how they're they're adapting today, and they're going to go forward and have a similar you know similar setup. Um, so if anything like this were to happen. You know, going forward, so there's going to be definitely more space, uh, you know, than there used to be. You know, with uh, you know, with with the office spaces, the you know, break rooms, you know, etc. Um, so we're we're definitely seeing that, and uh, what we're seeing is a lot of credit unions will, you know, doing the high high volume transactional high value transactions by having members, you know, coming into the lobby. Uh, you know, to do like a loans and do member service, but all the financial transactions are going to be done, you know, by, by machinery. 
So with branch reopening, uh, and again, it's, and again, I'm not 100% sure where you're all at with opening. Um, you know, a lot of, a lot of credit unions, uh, you know, are still remaining, you know, close to the public. And what we're seeing too is we're seeing a resurgence of, of COVID coming into play in a lot of different areas uh, of the country. And, you know, credit unions that were, were open, you know, to the public, now they're closing because of they're in hot spots. We had a situation, uh, I live in Maine, and we had a situation where, you know, we've had everything, you know, uh, pretty much under control. And then in Northern Maine, we had a wedding that had 60 people uh, attend, and it, it is now accounted for over 200 cases of COVID from that one wedding uh, in, in that area that, that had 60 people. So those institutions in, in that area, they had reopened up to the public, and now they are closing again uh, just for uh, you know uh, drive ups and appointments and, and what have you. So I think we're going to see that too. If you are open today, um, it may be with these with the, with the resurgence of COVID that you might be you know closing um, again. And if so, you've learned a lot more from what had happened back in March to to help you know help you out you know with that you know situation. So returning to work exposures, you know, what we're seeing out there, we see negligent supervision, uh, you know, exposure to the virus, you know, uh, refuse to return to work for health or safety reasons, you know, wrongful termination related to whistleblowing and safety concerns. So here are some, you know, we've actually had, you know, uh, claims that have been filed in some of these, you know, areas. And again, uh, when you talk about claims, you know, it's, it's very difficult to, to give you know a specific you know what's covered, what's not covered, and we don't uh, you know get deeply involved in that. But certainly, uh, you know when you talk to your your sales team or PNC specialists and some of the things that you can run by them, uh, claims is one of those difficult things that it's really hard to say what will be covered, what won't be covered. Everything has very specific uh, information to it. But you know, written administrative policy controls as well as you know uh, mandated you know practices are really critical uh, when you return to work. There's so much to consider uh, when you finally have everybody you know come back to work. A lot of times you may not uh, have everybody come back. It might be you know certain positions that are going to be you know coming back, and we'll talk about you know different uh, how you can protect yourself against against that. The biggest thing the credit unions have to abide by is state and local government orders. Um, so even though you may want to return to work, you may not be able to because of you know the the city, the state, uh, or whatever whatever's going on at the time. So we always want to make the credit union aware that you have to follow the guidelines uh, of state and local government. Um, also, when you do open up, you know there's going to be the CDC and OSHA guidelines as well. For safe practices in the workplace, uh, with OSHA uh, and the CDC, you know different types of uh, or organizations have different types of you know restrictions requirements. If you're a, a daycare, you have to follow follow things differently. If you're a business, you know a credit union, you might have to follow things differently. So again, it's really important before you open up that you you know you consult with your legal counsel and make sure that you know you're following all the uh, the state and local government orders, and again, abide by the CDC and OSHA OSHA guidelines. You know for sure. You know with with that because it's um, it's crazy. Also, what you always want to make sure of too. There are a lot of credit unions that have branches in different states, so you always want to follow whatever wherever that branch is in that particular state. You want to make sure that you're abiding by those uh, orders and. And I'm not sure if your credit unions uh, where you are at, if you do have any in different states, but you want to be careful with that. We, when you do um, when you do reopen, you want to make sure you you know contact the staff, kind of go over what you're planning on on doing, you know, with the reopening. Um, a lot of your staff has a lot of fairs, uh, and members also going to have some you know fairs as well. 
So again, you want to make sure that you, uh, you, 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 you talk with the staff, let them know what you're planning on doing, what the game plan is uh, in going forward. And again, just set all expectations uh, you know, with the staff. And again, just share facts, you know, no opinions uh, related to COVID-19. We actually have a, a branch reopening white paper that's out there, and we try to address everything uh, you know, for the credit union to think of when they're reopening, reopening the branch. Um, and one of the big things too, is we talk about, uh, people have been out of the office for an extended period of time, so there's the safeguards have gone way down as far as you know robberies are concerned or active shooter situations are concerned. So one of the things that we strongly recommend is when you do have people come back to the office, uh, that you have a you know a training, a robbery training, maybe an active shooter training, uh, kind of go over all the the security features once again that the credit union has because again everybody's going to be so focused on COVID. Um, and distancing and you know wearing protection and what have you that robbery may not be uh, in the forefront and we're going to be talking about uh, you know uh, wearing masks and the, the the potential of being robbed when you do open under these circumstances but on the front end before you reopen again talk with the staff and, and understand you know their concerns and be compassionate with them So prepping the branch staff and members, again, the, uh, the reconfiguration of the office space, you know, trying to do the, the six feet in between uh, all the workers, uh, having six feet markers within the credit union. So if you're at the teller station, you're at a loan officer uh, area, you know, have, you know, six feet uh, circles or squares that the members, you know, uh, have to, have to uh, abide by. Um, and this is going to be a big thing throughout the credit union. Um, we're also going to be talking about, you know, wearing, you know, wearing the masks as well. But the the spacing is going to be really critical. And this is also like in break rooms too. When we talk about break rooms, it's the same thing. You're going to have to make sure that you can stagger some breaks, so not everybody is in the break room together. Uh, transition employees back with continued, you know, remote work. Um, you know, again, not everybody may come back at the same time. You're going to have to look at that and, and say, okay, we're going to have a number of people who are going to still be working at home, and then we're going to transition people slowly back to the workforce. We have a lot of credit unions that have the uh, partitions uh, at the teller counter or in between the teller, tellers at the work workplaces. Um, and now we're seeing a lot of credit unions, because they have these acrylic partitions, it's going to be something that's going to be, you know, part of, you know, their branch of the future. You know, some have the bullet resistive glass, and some will say, well, we'll have the bullet resistive glass that so will, you know, act as, you know, protection from robbery, but also it's going to be that, you know, protection against, uh, you know, uh, having the partitions, also the spreading of, of of COVID. So we're seeing a lot more credit unions when they're doing new buildings now. They're kind of incorporating uh, these acrylic partitions. Uh, you know, for credit unions, for, you know, for their branches. One thing we always recommend that if you have a telecounter set up where you have, you know, telecount is all at a great height, and then you have a lower partition, um, you know, for ADA, uh, having a desk, you know, we recommend if you just continue that partition all the way across. Um, so if somebody's trying to rob you, they're going to, you know, keep the robber on the other side of the uh, telecounter. Um, so that's we just just recommend that you put a piece of uh, uh, acrylic uh, glass going across, so it looks like the telecom is all the same height and doesn't give the robber an opportunity to step over the um, the the desk and get behind the telecounter. And again, uh, lobby, drive-through, and back office operations. Again, you're going to do the same thing with space configurations, uh, meeting rooms. Are, are another one. You've got to, anytime you have board meetings, again, you want to adequately, you know, space, you know, space out. So credit unions that are building new locations, again, they have this in mind. Office hygiene, again, clean, uh, cleaning door handles, adhesives, you know, push pads. Uh, there's different surfaces, there's hard surfaces, there's soft surfaces. Uh, so you want to make sure how you're going to, you know, clean against those particular areas. But certainly the uh, tablets, printers, ATM monitors, uh, having those wiped down 
is really a, a, a good thing, doing it as, as often as possible. You know, walking around the, um, you know, credit union, having somebody walk around and, and cleaning, you know, periodically. Um, having signage, you know, saying that you will be, you know, cleaning as often as, as, as possible. It puts a good um, spin to it for the, from a public relations standpoint for your members. They have a very, a, a much better comfort level of what you're doing. Uh, Drive-throughs, again, are being much more popular because a lot of credit unions are still closed. Uh, they do have uh, canisters now that, you know, are wrapped, um, you know, that won't hold the, you know, hold the, hold the, the virus on it. So they're making these canisters uh, now for drive-throughs. And uh, you can wipe them down every time as well, but they're special canisters now for drive-ups. And have all these sanitation stations throughout the credit union um, is great. You know, the more you have, the better. I really encourage, uh, encourage your, 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 member, your membership to use these sanitizers and also have them not only in the lobby area, but throughout the credit union as well you know, for your uh, employees, you know, to use. You know, so you, you have the space, you know, you have the six feet distancing, you're cleaning all the time. And now, you know, with employees and stuff, you know, wearing masks, um, you know, you might have signage how to safely, you know, use your mask because a lot of times, you know, masks are great, but if you're not handling them properly, they could be, you know, a, a detriment rather than advantage. Um, you know, you, you just constantly have behavior reminders, you know, uh, you know, postings uh, on, on throughout the credit union of what you, you know, what your expectations are um, is really, really a big thing because uh, members who come in, you know, if they see the uh, hand sanitizer, you might have masks there for your membership to utilize as well. Um, if they see that, if they have their mask, it's just a uh, reminder. I know when I go into a store, um, I'm very conscious of wearing, you know, my mask um, and making sure that I have hand sanitizer with me. But sometimes I get out of my car and I'm walking, you know, into a store and it just doesn't hit me because I don't go out often anymore, you know, to put my mask on. So when you see the signage, uh, then I realize, oh, I have the mask, I'm going to put it on or I have to go back to my car. So the more signage you have, the better off you're going to be. Cleaning and disinfecting considerations. I know the EPA has a, a, a list of you know, product that you can use for disinfecting. Um, so you always want to you know, consult with you know, safe use of disinfectants. Um, you don't want to use something that has a lot of chemicals that could be uh, harmful you know, to anybody. And you know, what, what cleaning solution you are going to use for what type of surfaces. Um, again, if you have you know, a touch screen or if you have a keyboard and you're using a wet liquid or what have you, I mean, it could damage, uh, damage the equipment. So we definitely recommend you, you know, check with the EPA, see what cleaning materials you, know, uh, you can use safely because you don't want to, uh, again, jeopardize the safety of anybody. Our company has a national relationship with ServPro. Um, so what we recommend you do if you're going to have a cleaning company, you know, come in, you may want to call, you know, ServPro. We developed this relationship um, over a year ago, uh, well before COVID, um, and it was really designed for disaster uh, recovery. You know, so if you had a flood, you had a fire, um, then you could call, you know, we developed this national uh, relationship contract with ServPro, so you would get prefer preferential treatment. Uh, you know, going forward. So, you know, if you, they have six people ahead of you because you, you know, you're a credit union, you get the CUNY mutual bond or you, you know, then you're going to be moved to the head of the list. So we recommend you call the 1-800-SERVE-PRO uh, number. Um, and it is oftentimes is a contracted price. So you're going to get better pricing and preferential service. Uh, but you have to call the 1-800-SERVE-PRO and let them know that you are, uh, you know, CUNA mutual policy holder, um, and they'll make a note of that, and they will get you to the the right right place. The biggest thing with cleaning companies out there, and again, you guys would know better than I would which ones you deal with. Um, there's a lot of companies that have just came, you know, come up with uh, since COVID, and you really don't know what quality of work or what material, what what uh, cleaning solutions they're really using, and if they're reputable or not. 
Um, so again, if you don't use ServPro, which is fine, it's just a service that we kind of provide for the credit unions, just make sure you vet the cleaning company that you have. And you can, buy, you know, by doing that, you can see, you know, get, get recommendations maybe from other credit unions, uh, maybe from other businesses that they, they, they clean for. Because um, that's really a big thing. You want to make sure that if you have these cleaning co companies coming in, you're paying good money for having them come in, that they're reputable and they're doing the right job, you know, for you. Uh, employee safety and security issues are, again, a real big thing. You know, whether you are just opening up uh, by appointment only, or you're opening up by, you know, drive-through, or you know, you're, you're opening up full-time, you know, uh, uh, lobby use. Uh, we really have to consider employee safety and security issues because COVID is one thing, you know, catching the virus is one thing, but the, you know, the robbers have not gone away. Um, they become more creative. They realize that a lot of credit unions aren't open, a lot of businesses aren't open, but they still have, uh, they still have, you know, their, they still need their drugs. They still need the, the gamblers or the leaving, uh, leaving another alternative lifestyle. So they have these issues. They still need a need for money. So we're finding them to be a lot, uh, lot more creative now than ever before. So don't feel that uh, the robbery aspect has gone away. All we have to do is focus on you know, sanitation because it, that does happen. So some of the things we definitely recommend you do is reduce, you know, cash limits, you know, getting back to normal. A lot of credit unions, when COVID hit, they wanted to increase their overnight cash. And I know as a company that we raise, you know, limits, you know, for them. Um, so what we're finding now is uh, things have calmed down. The run of cash isn't there like it used to be. So we're seeing a lot of credit unions reducing cash. The more money you have uh, on, 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 on premise, the more likely you are to be robbed. Uh, the robbers will know, you know, members, uh, employees, uh, you know, talk to members, word gets out. You know, we're having a whole rash of robberies currently where the credit unions are being robbed by their own members. Um, and that's happening at a, at a pretty alarming rate, actually. And the reason for that is your, mem your employees talk to the members like their family, they get bits and pieces of information, and it's very dangerous. Um, so always make sure that your staff, you know, loose lips sink ships. Don't talk about how much money you have. So not only reducing money at the teller uh, at the um, the whole branch level, but also at the teller counter as well. You know, reduce it as much as you can. Have working supply and bulk supply of cash. Just have a smaller working supply. But a lot of credit unions might have, you know, TCDs, TCRs, and again, you can have some restrictions on them as well that we can uh, you know you know talk about they can either be a robbery deterrent or robbery enhancer um opening and closing credit unions now that aren't open to the public on a uh, on a full-time basis they're being attacked first thing in the morning and at closing time so more than ever you want to make sure that you have you know strict opening procedures and you know close uh, closing procedures um, because again, credit union, these robbers are being more creative. They got to get into the, the credit union some way. And the best way is before hours or after hours. And also what we're finding is uh, at the end, of, during the day, if the branch is closed to membership, what we're finding here is when employees leave to go to lunch or what have you, um, you're going to have to have the opening kind of and closing procedure mentality when you go out to lunch, because we have people being attacked when they go out to lunch they're being ambushed as they're coming back in. And now the, the credit union lobby is not open. No one realizes there's any, anybody in the office holding you all you know, against your will. And it could be a dangerous you know, type situation. So anytime you go out, you wanna make sure that uh, you, you have a safe path you know, to your car um, and have, you know, have some opening and closing type the signals that you can have when, you, when you're coming back. And again, we talked about the lax controls and routines after return to the office. And this is really true because you're, you're so concerned with uh, COVID, all, the other, you know, all, your, uh, all your other uh, instincts kind of go down when it comes to robberies um, and being held against, against your will. So again, having that training that I mentioned before is really a, a critical, critical thing. We also have a uh, robberies by people coming in, imitating you know, that they're a, a, a member or a vendor. 
So anytime you're dealing with, you know, vendors, you want to make sure who that vendor is. Um, if you branches, you know, close to general public and somebody's coming in to meet with you, you know, let them know right up front and let your membership know right up front, you know, about uh, you're going to ask them to remove your mask. You're going to identify who you are if you're a vendor. Uh, you're going to have to show identification. You're going to have to show, uh, you know, show, pull down your mask and show your face and just kind of lay all this out. Um, because if the vendors know, if somebody's trying to you know, perpetrate one of these vendor type impersonation for, uh, robberies, if they know up front that you're going to have all these safeguards, they're going to go somewhere else. But we've had that happen where somebody's either pretending they're an armored car, uh, either armored car, or they're coming in uh, saying they're with, um, you know, with a, you, you know, you have a, a, the guard, uh, you know, the regular type guard that you have at your, at your uh, branches. Um, credit unions have had, um, you know, guards come in um, to direct traffic to just kind of be another, you know, set of eyes. And they're, we're, we're having these guards being impersonated. Mike, We've also, yes. Is, sorry, this is Christine. Is it safe, though, for um, us to ask the member to take down their mask? And then because to me, that's exposing, you know, if they do have COVID, then it could be a risk to the MSC or whoever is helping the person? I mean, yep. would a ID card be better or, you know, like a driver's license or something? Yeah, that's all well and good, Christine, you're right. And I'm gonna be talking about, you know, mask and what, what to do. There's different safeguards that you can do. And basically you could be a good distance away and have a camera set up where they say, just take your mask off, smile for the camera, just pull it down for a brief second and look up at the camera type thing and the person will be you know, a, a good distance away. And another thing a lot of times too is, depending if the credit union is open full to the public or they're open by appointment, um, remember that in a case like that, they're gonna be behind the other closed locked door. So when the employee goes and meets them at the door, you, know, you have that the glass petition there, and then you can ask them to show their identification and take, it, uh, take your, your mask off you know, briefly to identify them. So well, that's a great point, um, but yeah, generally there's going to be uh, extenuating circumstances and, and mitigation, you know, tips that you do, so you're not like one foot from them as they pull down their mask. A lot of times, you know, you're going to have the petition between you and them for them to to briefly pull down their mask. And the biggest thing, you know, really to do that, it's it's going to be a safeguard. Um, if members realize that you're going to ask them to maybe show. Uh, take down your mask for a, a, a brief second. These robbers who are casing the credit union, who are looking for signage on the exterior door, who are looking at your websites, looking at, to see what you have for your, 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 you know, for mask wearing. If you have it displayed in your website that we may ask members to remove their mask temporarily for identification purposes. If I'm a robber and I'm looking at your website, I'm gonna see that. I know that if I go into your credit union, then I'm, I'm gonna realize that you might have me take off my mask and they're gonna go someplace else that don't advertise, you know, that. But no, you're absolutely right. There's th safe ways of doing it. But the biggest um, the biggest thing is by, by saying you're gonna ask them to do it, it's gonna reduce your probability of being robbed because the robber's gonna go, uh, when they're casing you, they're gonna go somewhere else. But that's a great question. I'm gonna be talking more about masks going forward, uh, Christine. And Thank you. Gonna cover up, but that's a great, great question. Um, Members, uh, just robberies in the drive-throughs, uh, granted, whether credit union is open to the public or not, um, a lot of them are sending the membership through the drive-through. And we've had increased robberies in the drive-through. And you're gonna say, well, how could that happen? Well, it's always been a, uh, a possibility. We've had always had robberies in the drive-throughs. But if a, if a robber can't get into the branch, then what they're going to do is try to uh, rob you in the drive-through. Now remember that bullet resistive glass is just that in the drive through Bullet resistive is not bulletproof. There's different levels of the, bullet, the glass that you have, class one, class two, class three, and they're meant for different types of weapons. The majority of the weapons, the bullet resistive glass will resist a bullet, but these high powered weapons that are out there now, they have different uh, higher levels of bullet resistive glass out there. Um, so we've had uh, employees say no, no, kind of say, nah, nah, you can't get me. I'm behind here and the robber drove around, shot through the windows and came in the front door. Um, we also have uh, uh, robbers who will go in a car 
whether it's an Uber driver, a taxi driver, and say to the uh, drive through either send me the money or else I'm gonna you know, shoot the cab driver or the Uber driver. Well, what they're doing is they send an explosive device or something that looks like an explosive device in the tube and with a note you know, saying either send money out, I'm gonna detonate you know, this, uh, this explosive device or they'll leave a, something in the building and, uh, and do that. So what we always say is, you know, even in drive-throughs, you know, give money, shut the uh, tube down and lock the door if the front door is not already, you know, locked. Um, but send out what, any money that you can and shut down the tube so they can't send anything back. Uh, members using the drive through as walk up is another thing that's a pretty dangerous situation. And if the lobby's closed, you know, you, you don't have a walk up window. So you have members who are using the drive up as walk up. So in cases like this, we do not recommend it as a company. Uh, we do understand that it could happen. Um, and if you if it is happening, you might want to have some type of you know policy in place to to address it. Um, oftentimes, you know, might have a cone that you could put out there. And maybe you can block off the 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 lane where you have the the bulletproof of glass window, or you can have the outside lane that you could have for the uh, member employee uh, for the members to use. But it's really dangerous when you have members walking up. Uh, they could be robbed once they do the transaction. They could be hit by a car. Um, social distancing is a problem, and that's why a lot of times with, um, you know, with having guards, we have credit unions that will have a guard on the outside and basically unarmed and just kind of directing traffic. Traffic might flow into the street um, because everybody's lined up in the drive through so you want to control that as well. Um, it could be dangerous, so, you know, people backed up into the street, you know, talk to your local police department to let them know that you might have cars that are, you know, uh, blocking the street for a period of time or what have you. Um, but that's a big thing that we're seeing. Um, with happening now too, with abuse of members, uh, it, it's, it, it's becoming more because like you say, Christine, with wearing a mask, you know, if you tell me to take off my mask and I don't want to take off my mask, you know, this all of a sudden this member could be, you know, abusive and, and start threatening. Um, well, if you tell somebody to put on a mask, um, so we, we've had credit unions have concerns with people wearing masks because of, because of robbery. And then we also have credit unions upset if you come in without a mask because of, of, of COVID. Um, so just be aware uh, that you should have training uh, on, uh, with your staff, how to handle an abusive member. Um, hostile members have always, it's always been there, but even more so now when you, you see it on TV, um, you know, quite a bit that there was, you know, a fight or something happening uh, because somebody was told to put on a mask and they refused to. So again, whatever your policies are, make sure that your employees know and how far you want to go and, you know, call a, a supervisor over if it's getting, um, you know, if it's getting, you know, tenuous or if it's threatening any way, you know, call the police. Uh, dollar recyclers and dispensers, I, I talked about earlier, they can either be a robbery to turn or, or uh, an enhancer. You want to have safeguards how much money they could spit out at a, a, a certain transaction. If you can spit out $80,000 for a transaction or for a teller, um, if somebody's casing you, a professional robber will case you, they're going to know what you can, you know, how much money they can spit out. So instead of, you know, it, all of a sudden they know they go up there, it's like having your ball of cash right there. So we recommend different the safeguards loaded before hours and after hours, reduce how much money can be, you know, spit out to, per transaction without needing an override. And also different robbery codes you can put on there that will spit out a predetermined dollar amount and also activate a, a robbery alarm you know, to the uh, alarm company. But it's all what you feel comfortable with with activating alarm when the robber's in the building. We already uh, talked about guards you know, in the parking lot, armed, unarmed guards. If you have armed guards um, or any guards, just let our company know. We wanna make sure you have the appropriate coverage in place. Um, if they are armed, you know, we have a, a few questions we want to ask. Uh, what relationship you have with their police officers off duty, uh, the police officers on duty, you know, there's, you want to be, make sure you have the appropriate coverage, you know, concerning that. And ATMs too, we're having a whole uh, rash of robberies at ATMs, uh, either members using the ATMs uh, or uh, ATMs being attacked, remote uh, uh, off-premise ATMs are being attacked. There's crime gangs going around and attacking the remote ATMs. So again, these are all things that if you want to have a deeper conversation with me, 
at a later date. You have my contact information. I'll be more than happy to talk to you. But they're in and out of that ATM. They're ripping the doors off of these remote ATMs in less than three minutes. Uh, they're removing the canisters and getting rid of the canisters. Um, so it's happening in Texas right now and, uh, and it's happening in different parts of the country that these are being attacked. So be aware of that. So when you're putting an ATM up, again, we can give you some good ideas of what, what area you should be putting them in and what to look for. You know, face covering, as, as, we, as we talked about, and Christine, that was a great question, you know, that, that you had. Um, you know, we have credit unions that will have all members and, and, and because of the, you know, state or, uh, you know, federal requirements, you know, you, people have to wear masks when they go out. Um, anytime you have a mask on, it's, it can be a dangerous situation for your staff because, again, most of the robberies happen. People come in with, you know, masks on. Um, so this is what I was saying, that if, if somebody's coming in, identify them either behind a petition or the closed door before you let them in one at a time. Because you also want to control how many people could be in the lobby at a time. Um, so you could open up the door, say, OK, go to position one, uh, open the door, go to position two and count how many people are in the lobby. Because again, there could be a, require, a limitation how much how many members could be on there in there. Um, if you have appointment only, uh, then again, you want to identify, as you mentioned, have identification, uh, meet them at the door, um, and then have them pull down their mask, identify them. Um, it's, it's, it's a big thing. Having signage on the door that you're going to ask them to do that is really a, a good thing, as I mentioned, because you are, you are being cased. We also have uh, credit unions that don't have a drive up. Um, so what they do is they have curbside service. So uh, they'll identify, the uh, member will call up, they'll identify who that member is. They want to do a transaction. They'll make an appointment at 10 o'clock. There's a des designated parking spot where they'll pull up. Uh, they'll pull up to that spot. They'll be identified. Uh, the transaction will be done. Um, so again, the safeguards, you know, for that, if that's going to be the case, and certainly want to limit cash if that's going to, how it, if you are allowing this. So working remote is a, is a big thing now that we're, we're seeing, and a lot of credit unions are only are working remote today. It's going to be something going forward with it. Um, so you really should uh, think about developing a telecommuting policy. And this is something too uh, that we look at. We can take a take a peek at for you. Um, but some of the things you want to include in there is eligibility, uh, what positions are eligible, uh, how you how an employee can request it. You know, uh, everybody can't work you know remotely. So again, you want to see what request uh, how you can do it by request. Management expectations. It's going to be more difficult. You know to see how somebody's working at home and what the expectations are going to be. Remote work facilities, you want to address, uh, do they need a separate office, you know, to work in? Uh, we do see that periodically in these policies. And what I generally say is, is it a required to have a, a separate office? It may not be a requirement. Um, and I kind of have the credit unions kind of reword that um, because most people, uh, they may not have the ability to have a separate office. Uh, you know, because of space in their home. But if they have a designated area that they can work, that's a quiet area that doesn't have, you know, interruptions, you don't hear noise in the background and stuff like that, that should be sufficient. Time worked is a real big thing, uh, you know, and time off. You have to, you know, work X amount of hours. You can't work more than the eight hours a day. So it's really important to address what the hours are going to be worked. You know, your expectation for your job position is work from eight to eight, eight to five with a half hour, you know, for lunch and two 15 minute breaks. So it's really important to set that expectation because of, of the, the time, um, the time laws. And also if someone's taking time off, what, you know, how is that, how is that going to be addressed? If I'm taking off today, you know, how do you notify people or you're taking off an afternoon? Workers' compensation and safety issues should be also, you know, addressed. Inclement weather and uh, compensation provisions. You know, what are you going to do if the home office is closed? Does that mean people working at home are closed uh, are off as well? Um, just because uh, the home office is closed, you know, you you still may expect your employees to work remotely. Expenses. What expenses you're going to be pick up? You're picking up if every if they're totally on their own. You know, technical support. 
uh, information security, equipment, you know, whether they're going to provide their own equipment or what have you. So these are all the different things that we, you know, recommend uh, in a telecommuting policy. There's benefits of telecommuting that we've seen. Well, we really have seen increased in productivity, certainly in expense savings from a space, uh, you know, you know, credit unions on, uh, you know, need, need all the space in the main office. Even though now what's happening though, even though you have less employees, people are working at home, you know, now you have that six feet uh, space in between employees. So whether you can reduce your amount of space in, in a particular branch if you're building it, it seems like still the, the same amount of space in a building is gonna be there because now you, you've got to space out more. We've seen de uh, decreased turnover because again, you make it more user friendly for the staff and decreased absenteeism because again, if they're working at home, if they're not really feeling well, you know, they're not jeopardizing the safety of people coming in and improved morale, you know, by working at home, a lot of times, you know, morale is, is increased. Consider challenges, you know, for non-traditional workplaces. Uh, you know, you wanna make sure you identify the, re, you know, re repetitive movements, uh, identify challenges with ergonomics er uh, issues. So uh, with your workers' compensation, you know, companies, uh, this is where you wanna, you know, get involved with you know, to see, you know, wh how the employees are working at home, what type of desks, you know, that they have. Uh, you know, here's, you know, ideal work design, you know, kind of, you know, show them this is what your expectations might be um, and stuff. But this is really for the workers' compensation companies, you know, they have all these designed. Just because, you know, credit unions have not had a lot of employees working remotely in the past, but, you know, uh, these uh, workers comp companies, this is very commonplace, you know, to them to have people work, you know, working remotely. I know I've been working, been working remotely, you know, my entire 35 year career. I do go to credit unions, you know, spend a lot of time in credit unions last few, uh, several years, uh, not so much. Um, but when I wasn't in credit unions, I am working at home. So we always want to make sure here are some best practices when you do work at home. You know, recommend having stretch breaks or a little exercise breaks, kind of build that in to the workday. Anytime you're sitting in one position, it could be, you know, harmful. So again, you know, 20 or 30 minutes, you know, do some stretching as you're working, you know, you can do some exercises. Um, you know, there's a lot of desks Some people like to stand, you know, during the workday. We see that a lot of times in credit unions as well. Um, you know, there's these desks that can go up and down. You can either stand for a period of time uh, and what have you. You know, having a monitor is a good thing uh, that it's a little bit bigger, um, you know, so you're not straining your eyes as, as much. But definitely, you know, have some rest breaks in there and exercise whenever you can. Workplace stress and anxiety, it's in interesting. Negative, negatively impacts 78% of employees according to a recent uh, report by Oracle and workplace intelligence. Uh, there's more stress we find, you know, some working at home, a lack of work-like balance, burnout, depression from non-socialization, and loneliness. Um, so even though I did mention that normally it does build morale, it's not, working at home is not for everybody. I mean, you really have to be disciplined. And I know a lot of times within my company, when I've been working at home for a long period of time and they were going into the office, you know, they would say to me, boy, you're lucky you're working at home. I have to go into the office every day. And I talk to these same, my same colleagues now who are now working at home and they say, I can't wait to get back to the office. This working at home is not a great situation you know, for me. Um, it, it does get lonely. Um, so you always want to you know, kind of have some interaction with, um, you know, with the home office. So work, working at home, uh, work, uh, remote work exposures, you know, access to personal and confidential information. So you want to make sure that your, your staff is aware that all personal and confidential information should be kept private, locked up if you have file cabinets. Uh, wage and hours uh, is, is really a big thing. They got to keep track of how many hours they work. They can't go over a certain amount of hours. Uh, managing remote workers is, is, is difficult. You got to keep on top of them. Um, accidents, Aeronomics are a big thing. So again, you want to make sure they have a safe, you know, working environment. 
So here are just some of the working at home exposures. And what we're finding is really these exposures are covered, you know, through your workers' comp. Um, and again, so that's always a great place to, to talk with uh, when, when you're looking for things you can do to protect yourself. Because of these, these are uh, workers' comp claims that we're seeing. So rem remote work best practices, again, ensure data protection, avoid FSLA violations. That's why it's so critical, you know, that you have them account, you know, for their, um, you know, for their time. You know, if you have, uh, you know, if, if they're going on break, you might want to let them know that, you know, they're going on break or that they're taking any time off. And again, you might want to put in there, you know, with job descriptions too, you got to rewrite a lot of these job descriptions, you know, uh, because the job descriptions as currently constituted won't really identify what you're doing at work. So you really want to make sure that your job descriptions, you don't know, match up with their, with their new job expectations with it. And then within each job description, we find is creditors like to put the hours of oper the, what they're required to work in each job description, because you might have call centers that work different hours. You might have a teleposition that might work at different hours. So you wanna make sure within that job description, you know, put in your, your job is from eight to five, you have a half hour for lunch, you have two 15 minute breaks. If you just, you know, put in, you're just uh, required to work an eight hour work day, what does that mean? Does that mean they could get up at, you know, work from 10 to whatever, um, just put in their eight hours or work four hours, take four hours off and work another four hours. So you wanna be pretty strict with that. Um, Provide a safe work environment. You want to make sure there's no, you know, tripping hazards. You want to make sure that um, you can. A lot of the policies that we've seen um, address uh, and credit unions can actually go and, and visit the, the the office to see if there's any, uh, you know, issues with uh, tripping hazards or stuff of that nature. I would be very careful with that. Number one, with COVID, no one's going to want to have you come into their home. Number two, you may go into their home and you might see different pictures of, I'm using this as an example, whether you like, uh, you know, the, you know, Donald Trump or don't like Donald Trump or you like Biden or what have you. Um, if they have pictures of Donald Trump, if you don't like Donald Trump, you might hold it against them. Um, or if they have different things that could be offensive to other people that's not in the working office, then you really shouldn't be looking at, at those. Um, be concerned with their office and what's in the background, absolutely. Um, you know, what you can do to do the inspections, you could do it remotely by having, uh, you know, have them show uh, with their phone or with, a, with their uh, computer just to kind of show there's no tripping hazards. Here's a, a desk I'm working with. Here's my chair. Um, so keep that in mind and we kind of correct, we kind of look at that in the policy. Uh, define availability, responsiveness and productivity. You're going to have to be able to, when you have a uh, evaluating your employee, you're gonna to have to have some you know, guidelines on you know, what the expectations are. The benefits uh, of telecommuting, I, I think I mentioned increased productivity, expense savings, turnover, absenteeism and improved morale. So again, just wanted to reiterate that, that those are some of the things that you know, are, are there. Um, so you know, we, we find that there are a lot of credit unions that are going to continue to have uh, employees telecommuting. So um, if, if that is, I just wanted to put that up again because I think it's an important one to, to consider. Okay, well, we have some, some time for, for questions. Well, thank you so much, Mike. I, um, I know that I have a question or two. Um, you know, at the end, you did mention that you think credit unions are probably going to have people working remotely. And, you know, I was thinking more in the minds of, you know, we have all these nice buildings and I don't know if people will be fully committed to working remotely or if they will be doing, you know, like having some hotel space and having the employees come in, you know, once a week or twice a week. Or do you vision that for the near future or do you think yeah. that it will be all or nothing? No, I think that's, a, again, great question, Christine. I, I think it's going to be a mixture of that. I think they're going to have rotating, you know, uh, rotating positions where maybe somebody comes in 
you know, two days a week uh, and, and others might come in three days a week and kind of, you know, trade off, you know, like that. Um, and one of the things that we, you know, see, uh, it, you know, trying to get together as, as, as much as you can. Yeah, I don't necessarily think it's all or nothing because you really want to make sure that you don't lose that, you know, that company fail. Um, when you have meetings, you know, have the Zoom meetings and have, you know, show your face, you know, welcome the employees every day by saying good morning, how's your day going and stuff like that. And I think if you're totally removed from it, never coming into a home office, I think that could lead to the loneliness, you know, for sure. So I, I think you're going to definitely see that it's going to be maybe two days, two days, three days, um, and then having them pulling them in periodically in a, in a safe environment. But you're absolutely right. You don't want to lose that connectivity. Right. Yeah. Now, are you ha do you hear from other credit unions that a lot of people are actually worried about coming into work because the person that sits maybe a few feet down from them, they know that they go out and, you know, maybe go visiting different people. And so they're worried about catching COVID from one of their coworkers. And so they're saying, no, I want to stay home because of exposure. Yeah, you do see that. And that's when it gets to be a pretty sticky situation. Um, and we'd always recommend, you know, consult legal counsel, you know, with that. But yeah, we, there's got to be reasons why you really don't want to come in, you know, to work. But we, you know, if you have a medical reason, uh, if you have different reasons, but we, we've had, you know, cases like that. Um, you know, if somebody's a known, you know, person who, you know, if, if somebody's going to one of these uh, high risk areas, you know, should they be, you know, quarantining for a couple of weeks before they come, you know, come back. So these are all things that credit unions, you know, have to address. And we always were just kind of say, uh, you know, with legal counsel to make sure that they're doing everything that, that possibly, you know, you know, can do. But yeah, we, we have employees who are nervous about, you know, coming in, um, especially know that this person, you know, they see them on social media, right. you know, going out without masks and stuff like that. So it is, is, it is one of those tough situations and there's no, you know, definitive answer that we can give, which is going to say check with, you know, your legal counsel with the regulations that you can do. And if somebody has it, you know, what, what, how are you going to follow, you know, having them being tested, they can't come back until they have a note from the doctor and not just by you saying them saying they were okay. So yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff like that that goes on, but it's, it, it puts a credit in a tough situation for sure. Yeah, I know it is hard. Um, now, what is your feeling on virtual off celebrations? Yeah, well, well again, the, the, around the holidays are a big thing. That's another <laughs> Another great question. Um, we definitely recommend these virtual celebrations because again, what we just uh, discussed is you wanna have the people feel as part of the, of the credit union. So having virtual celebrations um, is, is really a, a great thing, not only with the celebration for the, for the holiday, but you can you know, also you know, give rewards out, um, share business, business success, and just kind of have everybody in a, in a feel good position. Um, some of the things that you want to make sure of um, is, you know, you can have it voluntary. Um, you know, you, you can have it voluntary, whether you want people to be able to, you know, drink or not drink. That's something that, again, the credits will say, well, we're not going to have any drinking. Other <clears throat> institutions or other businesses might say we're going to have a cocktail party. But uh, anytime there's alcohol involved, you know, they could do something that could be you know, problematic, you know, talk with your staff, you know, to see what they would like to see in a holiday party, you know, what type of games, you know, uh, you might want to play, So kind of put it out there make it make them part of it. And uh, again, make it make it voluntary. Um, and one of the things too is give feedback at the end, uh, at the end of it too, for, for the for the next party, you know, what went well, what didn't go well. Um, but the, the key is, you know, have an agenda, make sure you invite everybody, you know, give them plenty of notice and, and make it make it voluntary. Right. Uh, and then there was another one of how often should we do robbery training? Yeah, robbery training, again, uh, robbery training, active shooter training should be done on a yearly basis, at least um, formalized. Uh, and again, I can certainly help you with, with that. Uh, we also recommend, you know, quarterly, just kind of going through when you have staff meetings, kind of go through and, and go over, uh, you know, robbery and, and active shooter, uh, you know, protocol. 
each time, just keep it fresh in everybody's, in everybody's mind. Um, and then anytime you have a new employee before they step out front of any of the credit union uh, members, before they, 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 they go anywhere, uh, we recommend that those uh, employees are trained immediately as part of their orientation program. And we do not recommend like a new employee, new teller have teller and training tags um, because those are ones that we picked on from a fraud standpoint and also from a robbery. But um, yeah, at least annually, but quarterly and new or new hires is great to kind of refresh it. Perfect. Well, thank you. And um, if anybody would like to get in touch with you, how would they be able to do that? Yeah, on that slide, I have the second slide uh, of the presentation too. Um, uh, my number, my number is six zero three seven seven zero seven five one zero. Again, six zero three seven seven zero seven five one zero is probably the best way to reach, you know, to get a hold of me. And my email address is Michael dot Petroni at cunamutual dot com. Uh, Michael dot P E T R O N E at cunamutual dot com. And uh, with that, Christine too is not only do, you know can offer my services, um, but we have all sorts of uh, white papers on a lot of different things. You know, branch reopening. Uh, we we talk about abusive members we put together. You know, active shooter robbery. Um, the branch of the future. So we have all sorts of white papers to help uh, the credit unions you know, uh, through these difficult times and going forward. So um, get in touch with me and I'll be able to, uh, you know, do one-on-one -on -one consulting with them or send them some of these great white papers. Oh, great. So, no, we really appreciate it. We appreciate your time and um, we thank you. And hopefully you have a great day. Thank you so much. And everybody, thank you for having me. You have a, it'd be all be safe. Thank you. Thank you.